Within 10 minutes walk of Davos Platz station, this funicular will take us a thousand feet above it. This line opened on Christmas Eve, 1899. So it's longer established than any of the funiculars we've seen in the Engadin. After five minutes ride, we transfer, at Schatzalp, to this cableway with its two-person cabins. These little cabins are automatically detached from the moving cable of the terminals. This makes boarding and alighting simpler for the less agile. The all-important ski holders are outside the door, for such a line exists mainly to serve winter sports. This gondelbahn, to use the German language term, replaced an earlier two-section chairlift with single chairs permanently attached. Davos, now about 2,500 feet below. On the Strela Pass, which has no road, we stand at 7,750 feet above sea level. Further transport was a ski tow, operating only in winter. That stands for Bergbahn Bremerbuel Jakobshorn. It's a two-section Luftseilbahn, a cableway with 40-person cabins. Like Chesterfield in Derbyshire, Davos has a crooked spire. The crooked steeple in close-up. The yellow footballs on the earth wire make the cables more obvious to flyers, human or otherwise. On many of these lines, one passenger car can be replaced by a freight platform, maybe for building materials. The Schatzalp funicular, seen across the valley. At this natural shoulder, Ischalp, we change to the second section. There seems to be a fault in the plexiglass, making the trees seem to wobble. Town's now more than 3,000 feet below. Plastic windows do show the scratches. Every mountain line supports a restaurant at the top. Perhaps the origin of the term? High prices? But it isn't necessary to buy anything to enjoy the extensive views. Waymarked footpaths lead in several directions. The descent to Davos should take about two hours.